Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi everyone. Welcome back to Quran 30 for 30. Alhamdulillah, we're in Juz 19. And before we get started, we want to remind you all, inshallah ta'ala, to please go ahead and sign up for the last 10 night donation. You can click the link, inshallah ta'ala, there, and you can automate your donations over the last 10 nights. And of course, we have the webathon as well coming up with Nahi ta'ala to prepare you for the last 10 nights this coming Tuesday, inshallah ta'ala. So we hope everyone signs up. But you know, alhamdulillah, we can't do what we do without uh, the support of our community. And inshallah ta'ala, you've been benefiting and you see the work and you see the value in the work, bidnillah, and you see your place in it, inshallah ta'ala. So please do uh, support uh, the work, bidnillah ta'ala, and keep yaqeen uh, free. And with that, alhamdulillah, we have with us uh, Dr. Dinan Yusuf and Dr. Omar Hussein, alhamdulillah, and of course, Sheikh Abdullah Uduru. How's everyone doing? Alhamdulillah. 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 Alhamdulillah is all around. Um, Dr. Omar Hussain, I've got a confession to make. Last year, you came on and you gave us a lecture about why we shouldn't do dad jokes. And you said we shouldn't call them dad jokes. And you had like a really profound insight. Um, unfortunately, Sheikh Abdullah has not stopped. He continues to use the, that, that word, and he continues to make... I don't know if you've been watching Quran 30 for 30 or if you're familiar, but uh, Allah Mustan, I, I don't know what it is with Sheikh Abdullah Duro. He just, <laughs> he just can't stop, you know? So if you want to give yeah, so give your brother some nasiha, please. Give Sheikh Abdullah some nasiha about about these jokes. I mean, it's it's a problem. And, and never give up. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll bear patiently with you until you get it, inshallah. We're here for you. Inshallah, <laughs> You got the message. So, Dr. Omar, we're trying. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll keep working. You know, use your help. He's just addicted, man. He just Google's dad jokes all the time. He Google's. Yes, he Google's. Mashallah. Sheikh Google. Yes, I go to Google all the time. Mashallah. To and especially when the Canadians come on. I don't know if you've seen Dr. Omar when the Canadians come on. I mean, Sheikh Abdullah is vicious. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that. it's not helping our reputation, is it, when the Canadians come on? So. Oh, man. <laughs> wow. 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 There's no Canadian here to defend themselves. But. The, door, the doors of Toba to dad jokes are always open. <laughs> the <laughs> doors of Toba. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, oh. we'll, keep, we'll keep trying, Sheikh. We'll keep trying, inshallah. Inshallah. Yeah. So, alhamdulillah. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started, inshallah. So, we're very excited to have our guests, Dr. Jinan and Dr. Omar, uh, with us today, Bidnina. So inshallah ta'ala, let's go ahead and get started. Hopefully everyone's logged on by now. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wana. Subhanallah, we're in juz 19 now. And there's always something when you're coming close to that juz 20, 21, and you realize that you're reaching the last uh, third of the Qur'an, and of course in Ramadan, that you're reaching the last uh, third of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be amongst those that observe Laylatul Qadr, Allahumma ameen. And subhanAllah, the theme of the last 10 nights is mala'ika, right? The angels, the angels coming down with their forgiveness or with the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, literally constricting every space between the heavens and the earth. And as believers, we love the angels because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends them and they come with goodness, right? So we we seek to do those deeds that invite the presence of the angels. And this is a theme that is especially profound in Ramadan and in the last 10 nights. But one thing to remember as we get into this juz in particular is that the angels only bear good news for the people of good deeds. The angels only come with the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the people of righteousness. And for the others uh, that are upon wickedness and that uh, do sinful deeds, the angels are actually a terrifying sight. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from that. Allahumma ameen. So it's, I haven't started with the juz yet for a reason because I actually want to introduce the first two ayat of the juz. If you think about the believer when the believer is passing away and the disbeliever, the wicked one, when the wicked one is passing away, right? So the righteous believer wicked, transgressor, disbeliever, the the nature of the descent of the angels is different. They're all malaika, right? They're all angels that are descending upon a person. 
but the believer sees the angels in a good way and the wicked sees the angels in a way that reflects again their their, their wickedness their disbelief their transgression and subhanallah even when the prophet sallallahu mentioned to us malik the keeper of the fire and the uh, the look that he has you know the ulama mentioned that malik the keeper of the fire it's not that he's created that way he just is made to look that way towards those that are in hellfire uh, to have that terrifying appearance towards them and we know of course that as jibreel alayhi salam comes down in these last 10 nights on laylatul qadr in particular jibreel alayhi salam also made dua against the person upon whom ramadan comes and leaves and they are not forgiven and the one whose parents reach old age and they are not forgiven and the one who hears the name of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and does not send salawat upon him is stingy with salawat upon our messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam all of this to introduce the first two ayat of juz 19 verses 21 22 when we get into al-furqan وقال الذين لا يرجون لقاءنا لولا أنزل علينا الملائكة أو نرى ربنا لقد استكبروا في أنفسهم وعتوا عتوا كبيرا that those who do not expect to meet us here لا يرجون as the ulama mentioned does not mean they do not want in particular it's that they're actually not expecting the meeting with Allah سبحانه وتعالى and the power of the language here is that they're hoping that they're not going to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that they're hoping that their philosophy that he doesn't exist and that the day of judgment is a fable is true. So, لا يرجون لقاءنا, they hope not to meet Allah. They say, if only the angels were sent down to us or we could see our Lord. Now, when they say, if only the angels were sent down to us, this is of course a repeated claim that they make often. And it starts in Surah Al-Baqarah with Bani Israel when it says, show us our Lord, right? Show us your Lord, O Musa. Go ahead and show Allah to us. When they say here, if the angels were sent down to us, specifically as Ibn Abbas says, what they're actually saying is, the only way we will believe that you are a Rasul, that you are a messenger, is if angels come down and point to you and say, هذا رسول الله. This is the messenger of Allah. Look at the condition that they're making on the Prophet wasallam. The only way we will believe you is if the angels themselves come down and testify to you being a messenger of Allah to us. Or we could see Allah, show us Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, اسْتَكْبَرُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ وَعَتَوْا كَبِيرًا Like they've really drunk their own Kool-Aid. This is my just, you know, uh, the way I read this ayah, subhanAllah, like they really are drunk with their own pride. They really think they're something. Like they've really inflated their own egos and they think so highly of themselves. Like who are you to make demands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this way? Demands of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and saying, go ahead and send us the angels. As if to say, we deserve to see Allah now. We deserve to have the angels come down and testify to you being a messenger of Allah. Allah sent angels to the messengers so that they could be in a place to save mankind. And so when man feels that sense of pride and says, show me Allah, show me the angels, and then maybe I'll take you seriously. Allah says, لَقَدْ اسْتَكْبَرُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ وَعَتَوْ عُتُوٌ كَبِيرًا And they have exceeded all limits. Like there are no boundaries for these people anymore. Now what's so profound, subhanAllah, is the very next ayah, like Allah takes us from dunya to akhirah rapidly. Allah Azza wa says, يَوْمَ يَرَوْنَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ لَا بُشْرَى يَوْمَ إِذٍ للمجرمين. Allah says, but on that day, they will see the angels. And there is not going to be any form of good news for the wicked. And they will cry out, Hijran Mahjura. Keep them away from us, keep away from us, put something between us and them. Now, subhanAllah, this, this uh, going forth to the hereafter in this regard, uh, I want you to look at it from a few different directions here. Number one, on the day of judgment, when they see the angels, what are the angels saying to them? The angels are saying, Alam yatikum nadir. Didn't a messenger come to you? Didn't a rasul come to you? Didn't a warner come to you? So in this life, they were saying to the messenger, Send, let the angels come down and say you're a messenger. And now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, look at them in the hereafter. They're saying, or they are being spoken to by those angels. And the angels are saying, didn't a rasul come to you? Didn't a messenger come to you? Didn't a warner come to you before you found yourself in this situation? And subhanAllah, on top of that, we look for the presence of the angels. We look for the presence of the malaika. 
but this is perhaps one of the most profound verses in that regard. Imagine these people are crying out to Allah, Hijr al-Mahjura, as Ibn Abbas says, they're asking Allah to put a barrier between them and the angels because the angels are coming at them with such fierceness, with such fury, only by the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And now, subhanAllah, these creatures of rahmah, these creatures of mercy, are creatures of torment to them. And they're saying, Hijr al-Mahjura, keep them away from us, keep them away from us, put up a barrier between us and them. Which shows you, subhanAllah, and I'll, and I'll end with this, you know, this juz, as you go through it, is a juz where regret is too late and the reward has been realized. Regret is too late. I mean, you see this with friends arguing in Surah Furqan. You see this with people in Hellfire. You see this with people saying, we wish we believed. There's a lot of we wish in this in this juz. And then there's also the reward of Ibadur Rahman, the reward of the servants of the Most Merciful. They are given their high places in paradise by their patience. So if you look at the qualities of Ibad al-Rahman, the servants of the most merciful, they are very much so, you know, guarding themselves from things that could compromise the reward in the hereafter. And now Allah is saying, look at their reward, look at their welcoming. So they held themselves and their reward has been realized. Whereas the others, the regret is too late. And of course, as long as we're here, we have a chance at Tawbah. And that is also a theme that we're going to be covering. So inshallah ta'ala with that, I'll pass it on to Dr. Omar Hussain. Zakmullah khair. So moving um, to the aforementioned Ibad rahman the servants of the merciful, let's start with a little scenario to put this into context. Let's imagine <clears throat> you're at work and you're told you need to meet a very important client. Like this is going to be, uh, you know, one of those once a decade type clients. So you got to be there to seal the deal. Okay. So they tell you they're going to be at this particular place. Meet them there at two o'clock and don't be late because these people are busy. We don't know how long they're going to be there. We need to get there and get it done. So you say, okay, you're sitting at your desk. It's about 1.45. You know it's going to take you an hour to get there. You say, yeah, I'll go at some point. Okay, then about 2.15 runs around, uh, rolls around and you say, okay, I should head out. You head out. Of course, you're late. You go to where you're supposed to meet the client, nowhere to be found. Now, at this point, a decent worker, even before going, would have said, I'm running late. A decent worker would have said, now I can't find the client. Maybe there's a chance that, you know, the manager can catch them. You don't do that. You get back in your car. You come back. You miss a meeting that was mandatory on the way. You had a deadline to get a project done at 6 p.m. 6.15 rolls around. You realize you were surfing the Internet and you didn't get it done. A few minutes later, you get a message from your manager to come up to the office. You start thinking, well, it hasn't been a very good day, but you know, I feel bad about it. It's just one of those days. So you go in and the manager sits you down and he or she starts telling you everything you did wrong that day. It's like, first you have the audacity to leave late when you knew it was gonna be an hour. Then you don't even call, so we could have potentially at least tried to get a hold of the client. Then you miss a mandatory meeting and don't even tell anybody about it. Then you miss the deadline for the project, which you've known about for weeks. Like, what's going on here? And you look the manager dead in the eye and you say, you know what? I'm I'm really sorry. Like, I'm sorry. I I don't know what got into me. The manager says, you're sorry? You say, yeah. So you really mean it? Say, you say, yeah. He said, okay. Uh, I'm going to give you a raise. For the first tardiness, I'm going to give you a raise. For the second one, I'm going to give you a promotion in your job title. For the third one, I'm going to give you that employee of the month parking right in the front. And you're like, and he starts going down and starts telling you all these things you're getting. You're getting increase in stock bonus, et cetera. And you're like, that doesn't make any sense. I made all these mistakes. He said, you made all those mistakes, but you're sorry about it. So I'm going to change them all to reward. Now, this doesn't really make any sense and would never happen in the real world. But this is the reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides when he says, فَأُولَٰئِكَ يُبَدِّلُ اللَّهُ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ حَسَنَاتِ For those who make tawbah, and Dr. Janan will touch on this, Allah changes their reward, their sins to good deeds, which is to me is just a mind-blowing concept. You know, we hear Allah will accept repentance or you'll get 
you know, one good deed is 10 good deeds or 700 good deeds, or in the case of fasting, there's no limit. But to actually have your sins changed is just something which is beyond grasp. So I went and I looked at a bunch of tafsirs of what does this verse mean? So who is this for? So what you'll find in many of the tafsir, the explanations of Quran, this is for our convert brothers and sisters or new Muslims or reverse, whatever you prefer. You know, we had a brother a week before the community I'm visiting accepted Islam and now is fasting with us. We had another sister during the month accept Islam and is fasting with us. Those who entered Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will change anything they did in the past that was sinful into good deeds. That is a beautiful thing. And I don't think I've ever told that to anyone uh, or at least not on any sort of consistent basis to our brothers and sisters that come into this deen. So Allah will change that. Also, it is Allah changing that false belief they had before to belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They will leave things in their life that they used to do for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that is another type of change which Allah has in reward uh, in store for those who accept the message. Other scholars say that it means believers in general. So those, and this starts at verse 63, and this is the time, because I know 30 for 30 audience is hardcore. They're going to go back and look. Those who implement these characteristics, they are the ones who Allah will also change their sins to good deeds. And so, alhamdulillah, you know, so we're striving for that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give reward and he will give it in this life. Now, another interpretation says that the reward actually comes in the next life. And the proof that's used for this is the Prophet sallallahu describes a man who will come on the day of judgment. And this will be one of the last men to get in to paradise. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring forth his uh, minor, minor sins, minor sins. And it will be like he's standing and, and saying, and Allah is almost like interrogating him. And no one wants to be interrogated by Allah, by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? So it's like, and he will say, Allah will say, you did this and you did this, you did this. And he cannot deny. He said, yes, Allah, I did this. And this person is getting really nervous because the, the major sins haven't even come yet. So this is just the minor sins. And then Allah says, you see all these sins here? I'm changing them all to good deeds. Because this person had iman in their heart. And then upon seeing this, the man will say, well, there's other sins I see here. I, uh, there's other sins I did I don't see here. And the Prophet Wasallam laughed. Uh, when he was narrating this, because this person seeing the sins change the good deeds is like, what about the other sins I committed so I can get more good deeds, right? So whatever it is, whether it's in this life or the next life, it's just uh, an incredible reward. And during this time of Ramadan, it's the time to seek it. Let me touch in the last 30 seconds on one one characteristic which is which is given about the Ibadul Rahman. Those who spend their night prostrating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, bowing and prostrating. And in Ramadan, this is easier. In fact, it may not be easier than any other time of the year. So there's no reason. Sometimes we get really intimidated for the hajj and think it's just for just, you know, people that are on another level. No, it's for all of us. And if we can implement it in this month and make it a practice, then inshallah we can be from the Ibadur Rahman. Dr. Omar. Beautiful words, subhanAllah. And I think it's amazing. Ibadur Rahman, to embody those qualities in Ramadan is literally like you said, it's the, the time to practice. Like instead of salama, qalu inni sa'im, right? <laughs> or qala inni sa'im. It's like the same things, like from the very beginning, like you you're approached by the ignorant, you're supposed to say I'm fasting. You go one by one, one by one, you can find that there's a correlation in Ramadan. So, Jazakallah khair for beautiful, profound words, especially that beautiful hadith. And uh, Dr. Jinan, we'll hand it over to you, inshallah. Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya mursaleen. Jazakumullah khairan for having me and Jazakumullah khairan Dr. Umar for that beautiful reflection um, on these ayat. And I'm going to be covering uh, the same verses, but inshallah, I hope uh, maybe in a different light. And I wanted to link it to the theme of Quran 30 for 30 this year, which is, you know, the Quranic worldview. And a lot of times, you know, we get stuck in the worldly worldview. And nowadays, there's a lot of messaging about 
um, you know, cutting out uh, toxic people, you need to protect your space, you need to protect, uh, you know, um, uh, your peace. And so we talk a lot about cutting out toxic people. But then there's obviously the flip side, because it's never us who's toxic, right? It's always other people who are toxic. But then what if I am the toxic person? What if I'm the person who is always letting other people down? What if I'm the person who's always breaking my promises? What if I am that friend who is the bad influence? And so, and what happens when actually I want to go back? I want to heal. I want to repair my relationships. Now, sometimes in this world, that's not possible. People won't give you another chance. They say, you know what, once, twice, you keep saying sorry. You know, this is not acceptable. Um, And so there becomes this permanent um, stain in our relationships with other people. Now, the Quranic worldview, or at least particularly in our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is completely flipped. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's a tawab. And with Allah, we can always go back to him. And these verses, they tell us that and they tell us exactly what happens when we turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so in these beautiful verses, as the Mashayikh have stated, you know, Allah talks about Ibadul Rahman and he gives us this beautiful, beautiful description. And inshallah, may Allah, you know, make us of them. And then in, you know, in continuing this description of them, Allah tells us, وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَدْعُونَ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخَرًا وَلَا يَقْتُلُونَ النَّفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ وَلَا يَزْنُونَ وَمَنْ يَفْعَلْ ذَلِكَ يَلْقَ أَثَامًا يُضَاعَفْ لَهُ الْعَذَابُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَيَخْلُدْ فِيهِ مُهَانًا So Allah says, and they're those who do not call upon any other God with Allah. They do not kill the self which Allah has made inviolable except in the pursuit of justice and do not fornicate. And whoever does that. Now, Allah is, you know, praising these people. But then what if, what if you did that? What if you're of the people who's done this or or done these things? And Allah says, you know, for those, whoever does that, they're going to encounter penalties. Yalqa athama. And then their punishment will be multiplied on the day of judgment. They'll remain in it forever in disgrace. Now, this is scary. You might think, wait, I've been there. I've been of those people. And so what happens now? Are we shut out? Is, is that it? Is it the end for us? And then Allah, very beautifully, he gives us this hope. And he says, Illa, right? Man taba wa amana. وَعَمَلَ عَمِلًا صَالِحًا فَأُولَٰئِكَ يُبَدِّلُ اللَّهُ سَيِّئَاتِهِمْ حَسَنَاتٍ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا وَمَنْ تَابَ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا فَإِنَّهُ يَتُوبُ إِلَى اللَّهِ مَتَابًا And Allah says, as for those who repent, believe, and do good deeds, they are the ones whose evil deeds Allah will change into good deeds. And Allah is all forgiving, merciful. And whoever repents and does good has truly turned to Allah properly. So Allah is telling us the one who repents, who returns, right, and believes and does does good deeds, they are the ones who, as Dr. Umar uh, explained to us, that, you know, they're the ones who their deeds, Allah is going to flip them or Allah is going to turn them into good deeds. And you might think, why? Like, why, why would Allah, why would anyone, why would Allah do that? And Allah tells us, you know, because he is ghafoor, right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's so forgiving that he forgives, you know, both in quantity and in quality. So no matter how many sins you've done or how bad they are, and Allah in the previous verse, he's talking about really bad things. And he does that out of his rahmah because he's rahimah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has this intense care and mercy for us. And so I want to focus here on Tawbah, what is Tawbah, right? And so when we talk about Tawbah, you know, Taba is Raja, right? That somebody returns. And so obviously in these verses, Allah is describing the worst deeds, right? So somebody might think, well, yeah, but I'm not, you know, I haven't, you know, done shirk, I haven't, you know, uh, you know, done zina, fornication, you know, um, uh, I haven't, you know, killed anyone, right? This is not for me. Tawbah is for those people. But Allah is actually pointing out that even those people will get this tabdeel, right? This, this changing of their deeds into, into, good, into, good, into good ones. But tawbah is not just from those things. Because if we look at the definition of tawbah, and tawbah means to return, then we all need to return. Allah says, You know, all of you return to Allah. 
And so we can turn back to Allah, not just from major sins, but we turn back to Allah from heedlessness, right? When, I, when I'm doing things without thinking of Allah, without considering Allah, with, from certain sins that I repeatedly do, from just being far from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, maybe I've prayed and I'm not focusing on my prayer, I need to return. All of these things need returning. And what does tawbah actually mean? Tawbah at the essence of it is just as regret, like it has like, you know, a past element, a present element and a future element. The past element is that I regret what I did. Like, you know, I should have, I should have been more devoted to my prayer. I should have said something nice instead of been rude. So you, re- you regret that. I really regret that. And then the next thing is the present, which is if I'm doing it now, I need to stop. That's part of the tawbah. And then the third thing is that I pledge not to return. So when I do tawbah and I have iman, this faith in Allah and amal, right? Wa amal amilan saliha, right? Allah says, if you have those three elements, then exactly as Dr. Umar explained, then the tabdeel happens. Then Allah, he'll change those bad deeds that you did um, into good. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, he tells us, Wallahu yurid, yuridu an yatuba alaykum. Allah says, Allah wants to accept you returning to him. You know, there's no human being after you mess up so many times that says, you know, I want you, you know, to, to come back, right? This is like, halas, I'm done with this person. But Allah is saying that like, no, no, Allah wants you to come back. Not only does he want you to come back, Allah has this joy when, when you come back. The Prophet ﷺ says, Allah أَشَدُّ فَرَحَ بِتَوْبَةِ عَبْدِهِ That Allah has this most intense joy. Um, when his servant returns to him, then the person who's in the desert and they've lost, you know, their, their, their camel that has all their food and they've just, they've resigned to their fate and then that camel comes back. Imagine just like the, the, the sheer ecstasy and joy. Allah is telling us like that Allah is so happy when you come back to him. Because sometimes, you know, we shut ourselves out. We think there's no hope. But Allah is telling us not only is there hope, but there's also potential that when you do good, you do amalan saliha, you can become even better. So inshallah, I'll stop here. Jazakumullah khairan. Jazakumullah khairan. Beautiful and profound reflections. May Allah bless you. Uh, Dr. Dinan, and inshallah ta'ala, Sheikh Abdullah. You can capitalize on that, but now you're taking us into Surah Shu'ara now. So, follow Shaykh. Yes, sir. Bismillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala amma ba'd. As we know that this month of Ramadan is a month of reflection, and it's a time for us to really look in the mirror, the spiritual mirror, if you will, and to hold ourselves accountable before we are held accountable, as we mentioned before on the statement of Umar, uh, Ibn al-Khattab, mashallah, not the Dr. Umar is here that are here, but Umar ibn al-Khattab, he would mention that statement. Uh, this month of Ramadan, even as is mentioned, that Ramadan comes linguistically, as some scholars would mention, of that which is of heat or fire that burns off previous sins or burns off the shortcomings from Ramadan. And, you know, that time of reflection and realizing the sins and using those sins as a catalyst for good deeds, as we mentioned, statement of Ibn Qayyim, that it's a sabab wa rahmatihi that the, 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 the sins that one may commit, if they think about them and they ponder over them and it, and it pushes them to have an intense feeling of iftiqar and feeling impoverished without the richness of, of the deen, the richness of Allah and his beautiful names and attributes, and also a, a, a dhul, that you debase yourself in front of him, prostrating for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, saying, subhana rabbi, al-a'la. You're in the lowest position, position calling on al-a'la, the most high. And that's what I want to talk about here. This month of forgiveness and being the month of thinking about oneself and thinking about their sins, one easy way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam have given us to uh, serve as a a means to, 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 to ask for forgiveness is thinking about those names and attributes and also thinking about the nations before that did not take heed to those names and attributes. So in the chapter of Shu'ara, it's interesting that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions two verses eight times in different places in the Quran. I mean, he mentions them from verse eight throughout the, this, this chapter all the way to verse 190. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
إن في ذلك لآية وما كان أكثرهم مؤمنين وإن ربك لهو العزيز الرحيم الله سبحانه وتعالى says these two verses uh, indeed and that is a sign but most of them were not were not to be believers and indeed your Lord he is the exalted the mighty and merciful so here when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions these verses most of the time out of these eight times it's a tavil it is at the end of him mentioning a punishment on previous nations that did not take heed that did not believe in the message of the prophets from before at the beginning of the chapter he talks about his greatness and his what we call rububiyah his lordship his ability to create to manifest creation in different ways and that's when he mentions it in the beginning but the majority of the time he's talking about nations that were punished or nations that did not take heed to the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because when one takes heed to the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala primarily in looking at the previous nations that did not take heed and thinking about those beautiful names and attributes and how they are manifest in his or her life and how they can live out those names and attributes not at the level of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but within themselves and their abilities and capabilities this is when one goes through that process of toba to where their deeds of repentance to where their deeds will be replaced by good ones their evil deeds or shortcomings will be replaced by good ones so when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying firstly inna fi dhalika la ayatan wa ma kana aktharuhum mu'minin that verily in that in that meaning what was mentioned verses before in these other six or seven times about the perished nations that were punished it's a sign for those but most of them were not believers the scholars mentioned that this was repeated numerous times to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as a means of encouragement and a means of comforting him because you have to remember as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran فَلَعَلَّكَ بَاخِعٌ نَفْسَكَ it hurts you that they do not accept this message there is someone in each and every single one of us in our life a person we care for that we want good for but it hurts us that they don't accept the message of morality maybe not even of Islam as of yet but definitely within the Islamic spirit of them trying to get off a certain addiction that they may have of them trying to change themselves just trying and it hurts us that they don't even make the attempt this is what bakhir was with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam it hurt him that his people didn't embrace the message but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying look muma kana aktharuhum mu'minin that most of them were not believers anyway they would not believe and this is cuz of the allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's predestination his qadr his ability his might his mercy and that's what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says after that wa inna rabbaka lahu al azizu ar rahim and verily your lord is al azizu ar rahim so him mentioning these two names the scholars have mentioned and even before that when we think of the name of al azizu ar rahim that allah is the almighty and he is the most merciful it sounds kind of polar opposites but when we look at the names and attributes of allah it's very important for us to have uh or un, an understanding of the principles when dealing with the names of Allah when we say principles in arabic the word is so much more eloquent it is qaida which basically means if someone was to sit and to be established in a certain place so it is those things that you have within yourself that you will not budge for anything so when we talk about the principles of the names and attributes of Allah these are the names and attributes of Allah that we must remember to keep us firm in our faith and in our actions so the first of them being al-aziz the al-aziz this is the mighty and scholars have talked about Allah being al-aziz and might and strong and strength and not being overpowered some of them scholars some of the scholars they mentioned that al-'izzatul qadr that he has might in his ability no one can overpower Allah that he is al ghalib he is the one that has overarching might over everything and it makes sense because he created it and he maintains it sustains it and can take it away from its existence no one has the power as is mentioned la rad li ma arad there is no one that can that can repel whatever he wants which leads to the second category of uh izzatu al qahr that he is the irresistible that no one can resist Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no one can resist his actions when the seasons change we cannot change winter to summer even though some of us want to and some of us want summer to be winter 
It is not up to us. Allah has ultimate authority over that. And the nations that came before his izzatul qahr, he has the ability to overpower. He is irresistible. And also izzatul al-imtina, that he has the might to prohibit anything. As we mentioned in the dua, that there is nothing that can prohibit what he has given and that there is nothing that can give what he has prohibited. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can prohibit his risk. He can prohibit his provision for a hikmatan baliha. And that's for, important for us to mention, which moves on to the next day, name, al-azizu ar-rahim. One would think the one that is almighty has no mercy. And someone that is full of mercy, we may mistake in them for being someone that has no strength. But we see that in our mind, our limited perception, that it may be polar opposites. But that is not with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every name is as a scholar say mutadakhin. They all have some type of association. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being, uh, 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 in this example, his izzah, his might is, is coupled with mercy. His might is coupled with mercy. Being that when he is, he his might that he may punish a people, but he may withhold that punishment that is that, that might because he wants the, those individuals, the disbelievers, those that didn't believe, to give them time to repent. And also his might is he is showing the messengers, alayhi musalam, that he has an ability and also with the people that disbelieve for them to know that he has this full might and he is able to take them off of the face of the earth. And his mercy is the mercy of withholding, as was mentioned, for them to seek forgiveness. Also, the mercy of the ta'yid wa nasr, the mercy that he has given the messengers by helping and assisting them and making them victorious. So remember, brothers and sisters, in this beautiful month of Ramadan, let's take advantage to look at these beautiful names and attributes and how they are, how they are showered upon us at every single moment. It is only our responsibility to do our best to do dhikr, the remembrance of Allah, the remembrance of those names, the remembrance of those attributes, the remembrance of how that happened in my life and I was saved from this or I was given this or this person was given something and it reminded me about the beautiful name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to where my eyes shed tears. And that, when you think in that fashion, you will think of a shortcoming and you'll ask forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those that seek forgiveness from him to our evil deeds will be turned to good ones in the light ta'ala. For verily, he is Ar-Rahim, but he is also Al-Aziz. Barakallahu fi I mean, Zakallahu khayar. Subhanallah. And to adhib hum fa innahu ibadak. You know, if, if you punish them, they're your, your, your slaves. But if you forgive them, then you are who you are, O oh Allah. You are Al-Aziz. You are, you are Ar-Rahim. Uh, it is up to Allah Azza wa Jal, the mighty and the, the merciful one. Uh, to do as he pleases. And subhanAllah, I think my takeaway from uh, Sheikh Abdullah's profound reflections and uh, the profound reflections as well of uh, Dr. Jinan, Dr. Omar, you know, a lot of times you might think, did they get a fair chance? And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning, like anyone who's going to be punished on the day of judgment got a fair chance. It's clear, you know, that, that it's been established in that way. And that he wants to forgive he wants to show mercy and so those opportunities are given and we have to avail ourselves of that mercy i mean just look at laylatul qadr the opportunity of laylatul qadr that comes to us subhanallah what a great rahmah that we have this to look for in the last 10 nights alhamdulillah may allah make us amongst those who observe it allahumma ameen mm -hmm. so because dr dinan is uh the one who authors many of our names of allah papers and has a book on it uh, I'd love to hear her reflections, final thought, and a final thought from Dr. Omar, inshallah ta'ala, as well. And then we'll go ahead and we'll uh, close for tonight. Barakallah uh, Sheikh Abdullah, that was really, really beautiful. I love that. I think maybe just one thing that I wanted to add to that is that a lot of times people find it hard to, ref to connect to the Rahmah of Allah when they read these verses, right? And even though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he's Aziz Rahim, people don't get it. Like how? How is Allah Rahim when Allah is talking about, you know, uh, destroying a previous peoples? But actually, subhanAllah, part of that Rahmah, that Allah has this, such an intense mercy for us, it's actually in telling us these stories so that we don't fall into the same trap. Someone who loves you is not just going to show you you know, uh, the beautiful things, and then you're unprepared 
right? For the more, um, the negative things. And so Allah is showing us this. It's, it's out of his rahmah that don't be like those people. Allah doesn't want you to be like those people. You are reading this and out of Allah's care and love for you, it's for you to say, I, what, what do I do to not be of these people? And so it's really out of Allah's care. So Allah's izzah and his strength that he can do this, but also his rahmah and showing you this, that you have a chance to save yourself and Allah wants you to be saved. Otherwise, you wouldn't be reading this. And so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who, you know, just reflect on his names and on his rahmah uh, when we recite the Quran and really feel his mercy and, you know, every letter, every letter of the Quran. Dr. Make a small, I want to make a small plug, inshallah, for Dr. Amr as well. If you want to learn how to make du'as from the Quran, he has a, a uh, mashallah, session uh, series on in yaqeen. Of du'a from the Quran, very very nice, and this is the month to try to memorize them. Inshallah, Taala. Jazakallah khairan. You know, and j just hearing that, like, there's so much, so much packed into this, uh, into this juz. But really, if I just had to basically summarize it, Allah won't cancel you. It doesn't matter what you've done. Um, one moment of sincerity is enough to change all the circumstances before because even though the the verses talked about you know those that don't worship um other than allah and they don't commit you know fornication and, and these things even those that did if they are sincere and repent they won't be canceled right so there's always an opportunity there and i know in ramadan um, many people are coming to the masjid maybe for the first time or maybe not uh, after a long time but just with that sincerity, the door is open. And that's just very inspiring and just, uh, just, just makes you feel good, you know, when you when you hear these verses, subhanAllah. Zakallah khaira. Zakallah khaira, Sheikh Abdullah for the plug. Uh, two for, for Dr. Omar's uh, series, alhamdulillah. So check out Dr. Omar's series on uh, Du'as from the Quran. You can find it on Yaqeen's YouTube channel. Scroll on the playlist, but in the night ta'ala, it was a very beautiful series. Dr. Dinan's multiple papers on the names of Allah, as well as her book uh, on the names of Allah. Uh, you can find many of those papers uh, at Yaqeen's website as well, uh, and and her her book as well. And of course, uh, Sheikh Abdullah every single every single night, mashallah ta'ala, brings brings the A game, mashallah. And he will try, uh, Dr. Omar, he will try uh, to stop making those jokes. He'll try, inshallah. As I've stopped him in ping pong, uh, I'll try to. Uh, <laughs> I'll try at least. Stopped, or are you are you are you casting a, a past tense on a future desire? Is that what's happening right now? Jazakumullah khair, everyone. Inshallah, we'll see you all uh, tomorrow. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum.